Buenas tardes, saludo a todos los amigos. Soy James Bamba, de Mangaye, pago que más capo en la isla, que es de Mariana, si es la luta. Se pago para ver el presentador de Amso, ni el programa de Mami, que es de luta, y el programa de Manhassan, na Tinanum. No creo que sea dos más italo, ni esta es la oportunidad. Today I'll be presenting the Luta Plant Extinction Prevention Program, LPEP. But first, I'd like to thank our sponsors today, and it's brought to you by the letters D-O-I. The fine folks at the Department of Interior who fund our work in alphabetical order. The Office of Insular Affairs and the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. Undunkulu Nasizu Small State to them for funding our project and making this very important work possible. Last but not least, I'd like to give a shout out to an awesome mentor and our local forestry supervisor, C. James C. Manglotnya the road of forester for his invaluable knowledge and guidance regarding the native flora of Luta. So here's my obligatory first slide, and now I'll be giving you an introduction to our program, some of the species we work with, what we've been doing, what we plan on doing, and then I'll cover it all again. Our work is conducted here on the island of Luta or Roda, which for those that may be joining us that aren't familiar is located north of Anzuta Island and south of Agiguan and is part of the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands and it is approximately 36 miles or around 58 kilometers north of the U.S. territory of Guam. So our program is part of the CNMI Department of Lands and Natural Resources Endangered Species Program and was initially started in 2016 uh, on the plant side of the house. And the Endangered Species Program is headed by our program manager, Dr. Lisa Stukowski. I was brought on as a nursery technician in 2017 and later on in 2020, Kindle, our biotech, and Anna, our dear biologist, joined through NOA grant. Uh, we're a multifaceted program aimed at improving the dire situation of the endangered plant species here on Luta, with a focus on Cerianthes nelsoni, Osmoxylon marianense, and Nasogenus rotensis. Uh, we've added a few more endangered plant species to the lineup, and they'll be making their appearances FY 2022. Our program is focused on endangered plant species here on the island of Luta. We do all the fun in the sun work like seed collection, propagation, outplanting, protecting, monitoring, and maintenance of our plants. Additionally, we monitor, protect, and maintain the naturally occurring plants in the wild. Here you can see some fun drone footage of the last remaining Isang subpopulation uh, naturally occurring adult Cerianthes nelsoni. Uh, and we put up this fencing, which is about 300 linear feet and six foot tall around this tree to keep out uh, the deer and some domesticated animals that are roaming around in this area. We haven't noticed any uh, natural germination of Cerianthi seeds below the trees, so we wanted to do a test uh, to see if that may be the cause, these uh, hungry, hungry hippos wandering around in the area. This type of footage is nice because it kind of gives you a feel for how large the tree is with uh, the truck and the opening of the clip and then uh, the six foot tall fencing as a gauge and then the drone taking off and circling around the tree. So it's actually kind of gives you a good uh, grasp of how large these trees can get. And actually, this isn't one of the largest ones that we work with. And the second half of our program is the Keleguin Binadu side of the house, which Anna and Kindu take care of for the most part. They're collecting information about the Binadu, or Philippine brown deer, to assess the population here on Luta. So I've given you an overview of our program, and now here's a really nice map of Luta that you can see where our outplantings are, kind of, sort of. <laughs> um, so here you can see Heritiera, Asmoxalon, Serianthes, and Tabernay, Mantanonia uh, clustered together in various areas. And majority of the outplantings occur on or around Sabana. And then we have a few other locations like uh, Bird Sanctuary and Maliluk. We just put uh, a couple plants out there. And uh, also here in Sungsung, village, we have one uh, Cerianthes that is in uh, our compound. So this kind of gives you an idea of where they're all at. 
and we're planning to put out more once the rainy season starts. So I've given you a broad overview of our program, both the plant side of the house and the more delicious side, the Caligun Bonado side of the house, the uh, deer part of the program. And on Kindle, we'll talk more about that uh, at a later presentation. But, you know, uh, this isn't a conclusion. <laughs> uh, the way ahead, you know, is dictated by our challenges. They go hand in hand, right? So we've identified some of our challenges. Uh, some of our biggest challenges are seedling mortality, both in the nursery and in outplantings, and seed or propagial predation. And, you know, we don't have any clear-cut identities to who's eating the seeds of Cerianthes or Smoxalon. Uh, so that brings us to our way ahead. Uh, seedling mortality and seed predation are like two of the biggest problems we have. If we get the seeds, if we get the seeds, and we germinate the seeds, uh, they, you know, they, they grow. But uh, sometimes bugs kill them, sometimes deer kill them. Uh, and we want to mitigate those problems, right? So uh, we're really looking at some best practices from other nurseries and, you know, really looking at their nursery management practices and also how to prevent plant pests from getting to our plants, both at the seedling stage and at the outplanting stage. Uh, in the beginning of the, or in the beginning of my time here at the, uh, rare Plants Program, or LPEP, we predominantly used four-foot fencing, but that wasn't sufficient. Deer were able to climb up onto the fence, eat the plant, and that caused a lot of problems. So we have now moved away from four-foot tall fencing to six-foot tall fencing. And so we're going to monitor our plants and see if that really helps uh, keep the deer out of our plants Back to the plant pests like the insects, predominantly mealybugs. So we've looked at a lot of things to try and, you know, keep the mealybugs out. Uh, short of using, you know, a lot of pesticide insecticides in the nursery, um, we looked at getting a soil sterilizer. And here's another challenge. Rhoda's kind of isolated, transportation-wise, and then the pandemic. So it's really trying to implement these practices in the best way possible, in the most efficient way possible. So uh, we've started the process to order a sterilizer, soil sterilizer, electric soil sterilizer, to you know, prepare the soil for the seedlings. And then we've isolated our rare plants, the endangered species, into their own nursery shade house to keep them away from the other plants. And then we are trying to keep the ants out of our pants. Plants. Keep them out of our plants. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of challenges. And if it was easy, these wouldn't be federally listed endangered species, right? Am I right? <laughs> so that's our way ahead. We're changing some of our practices to what we believe and what has been shown to be better practices. So Kindo, Anna, and I in our program are ultimately working to prevent the extinction of these endangered species here on the island of Luta. We each bring something to the table. I work on the plant side of the house by collecting seeds, propagating, outplanting, maintaining, and protecting them from these plant pests like deer and mealybugs. And Anna is studying the deer and their impacts on the ecosystem and how many there are. And then Kindo, a.k.a. Jack Fujihira, <laughs> is a jack of all trades and he works on both sides of the houses, which is pretty amazing. Um, and we're also looking outwards to see what's being done elsewhere to get a better understanding of some best practices in nursery management and how studies are done. Well, Anna is doing that. <laughs> and we're bringing it all together to try and improve our program and prevent the extinction of these endangered species on the island of Luta. And 
With that, I'd like to conclude my presentation. I thank you for your attention. And once again, I would like to thank um, the MTCC staff and everyone that had put together this conference and also our sponsors, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the Office of Insular Affairs for making our work possible. And once again, I'd like to thank James Manglonia and my colleagues, Anna and Kendo, and our program manager, Lisa, for assisting us in saving Luta's endangered plants.